So, I hope you're excited about today's lecture. This is the first subsection of birth defects in prenatal diagnosis and I am Sanan Rahman. Let's take a look on birth defects in a little detail. Before going into this section, I'd like to outline what we'll study in this lecture, in this subsection of this lecture. We'll be talking about the malformations and disruptions. We'll be talking about the deformations in the fetus and we'll be talking about syndromes and associations that occur in a child or a fetus. Now let's take a look on these one by one. What is a defect? It is either a structural, behavioral, functional or metabolic disorder which is usually present at birth. It is the leading cause of infant mortality which contributes to about 21%. Mortality rates are non-discriminatory. What does this mean? It means it does not discriminate between genders. It does not discriminate between races. It can affect an African the same way as it can affect an Asian. It can affect a European the same way it can affect an American. It is 40 to 60 percent of the times idiopathic. The cause is not known why a birth defect may have occurred. Minor anomalies are usually present in 15% of the newborns, uh, of the total newborns. Uh, greater the number of minor anomalies in a newborn, there's greater chance of having a major birth defect. This is the reason the pediatric surgeon or the gynecologist checks every infant for any minor or major deformity at birth. So let's take a look at malformations. What are malformations? As the name suggests, mal means, what does mal mean? Mal means improper formation, means formation to make. So as per the literal meaning, it means improper making. Let's see if that's the case or not. It occurs during the formation of structures, that is during the period of organogenesis. What is the period of organogenesis? It is between the third and eighth week of development of a fetus that all the structures and organs are being formed. This, this period is known as the period of organogenesis and it is during this period that malformations occur. They may cause partial or complete absence of a structure. It may be a limb, it may be a finger, it depends but it may be completely or partially lost. There's alteration of normal configuration of a structure. So it means malformation stands for its literal meaning that was disruption in the original structure of a thing. It is caused by environmental or genetic factors that may act individually or in concert. Obviously, you know, if a fact, if an individual teratogenic factor is acting, the chances of having a malformation are singular. However, they multiply exponentially if multiple factors are acting at the same time. So again, mostly occurs during third to eighth week of gestation. That was the period of what? Yes, that was the period of organogenesis. Okay, now we'll take disruptions in a little detail. What are disruptions? These result in morphological alteration of an already formed structure. In the previous slide, we talked about malformations. That was it in uh, that was alteration of the normal configuration of a structure. Now the structure has already been formed, but there is a morphological alteration in the way the structure is being handled or being uh, developed further. It is caused by a destructive process. Uh, examples include vascular accidents that may lead to bowel atresia, defects produced by amniotic bands. In the figure you can clearly see a defect which is produced by the amniotic band. Amniotic band causes um, banding of the fingers as a result of which you can see the fingers are not properly formed and that there's alteration of an already formed normal finger. Now. Let's talk about deformations. What are deformations? Uh, we can go with the little meaning as well. Deform is um, something which was normally formed is now being uh, abnormally formed or now being altered. So let's take a look if that's the case or not. 
it results from mechanical force. So something was normally formed initially, then something acted, a mechanical force may be acted on it as a result of which the normal structure was deformed or the normal structure was changed in some way. Uh, it molds a part of fetus over a prolonged period. Obviously, during the time of gestation, when the period, uh, when the fetus uh, was in the amniotic cavity, the molding was taking place. As a result of that, deformation has occurred. For example, compression in the amniotic cavity can cause clubbing of the feet. They, in the figure, you can clearly see the feet are being clubbed. Uh, this may be due to decreased amount of uh, amniotic fluid as a result of which the feet cannot move properly or there may not be enough room for the feet to move as a result of which they are clubbed. Often involve the musculoskeletal systems. So clearly you can see in the figure the limbs are being involved. They are part of the musculoskeletal system. It may be reversal, reversible postnatally. After the child is born, such defects are usually reversible. Not always, but usually, mostly, they are reversible. So, now, what is a syndrome and what is an association? So, a syndrome is a group of anomalies that is usually occurring together. Initially, the three things we uh, discussed were individual things. They were not occurring together. But in a syndrome, there are multiple anomalies which may occur together at the same time. They have a specific common cause that may incite uh, a syndrome to occur. Uh, it's diagnostic. Having a syndrome, having a specific set of features uh, classifies uh, a certain syndrome and that is how we make a diagnosis of it. The risk of recurrence is known. It is very well studied. Usually the syndromes are well studied and the risk of recurrence is known. Um, in contrast, now we'll talk about the associations. These are the non-random appearance of two or more anomalies. Let's say there was anomaly A and anomaly B. In, there was a syndrome in which A and B were occurring together, okay? Now we know that in a syndrome, A and B will occur together. However, um, in another patient, we see that uh, anomaly A occurs with anomaly B, but it's not a syndrome. So what would it be? It would be an association in which there would be a non-random appearance of two or more anomalies. They occur together more commonly than by chance alone. And in this case, the cause has not been determined yet. The research is usually ongoing, but the cause is not known as of yet. The example of this is vectorial. Now, what is vectorial? It's vertebral, anal, cardiac, tracheoesophageal, renal, and limb anomalies that occur together. This is an association, the cause of which is not exactly known. I hope you like this section. In this section, we talked about disruptions, malformations, anomalies, syndromes, and associations. All of these are very important clinically. You may have a patient or two, you may have already seen them, or you may see them when you go to your gynecological rotations. For further sections of this presentation, keep watching cicardia.com.